Okay, so when we're talking about accommodation in Chester, first of all, uh, what I'd like you to know is accommodation is slightly more expensive in Chester than compared to other areas like Liverpool or Manchester. However, it's not that accommodation is way too pricey or difficult to find because a lot of students, uh, international students especially, do live in Chester, um, which is kind of why it's relatively more expensive. Um, however, so if we talk about like getting an accommodation once you've applied to the University of Chester, um, you can get accommodation through the accommodation website. So it's like you can get university accommodation um, or you can also get private accommodation if that's not an option available. So um, when we talk about university accommodation, we've got basically two major categories of rooms. The first is like a general room where you have to share the bathroom and kitchen. Um, and the other is ensuite, which is basically a room where you've got your own bathroom. And some have a kitchen, but otherwise the kitchen is shared. So um, these two rooms vary by price and by size sometimes. Um, the general rooms are relatively cheaper. Um, they're not that expensive. And if you apply beforehand, you can easily get um, a room because accommodation is guaranteed to international students if they apply within a certain date. So you need to check the website for accommodation for that date. Um, but if you apply, for example, like when I applied in, in August, um, accommodation was guaranteed to me until maybe the first week of August, but I missed that deadline. Um, however, because I had applied within August and I came in October, they were, I was still fortunate enough to get a room because I went and talked to the accommodation team in campus. So I'd definitely recommend that you guys talk to, um, do your research and apply to the accommodation um, through the website within like when you do have some specific time frame, you know, before coming to uni, um, before your flight here. Oh, once you finalize that you want to come to Chester, just book accommodation is what I'd recommend. Um, also, the university uh, university owned accommodation is usually close by to campus. So it's all almost always a walking distance. Um, so I think that would be really helpful for all students if they just, you know, um, they're planning to um, commute to uni by walking. Um, they want to walk to uni, then uh, it's easier if you have university accommodation. Okay, so secondly, um, when we talk about private accommodation, this is also a good option if, if one, uh, you don't have any university accommodation arrangements, or two, you want an arrangement with your dependent or you 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 might want like to um live in like a place slightly outside of um the city area then private accommodation is still an option so with private accommodation you need to understand that there is like a contract that you have to sign uh, the contract is usually about six months and at least six months yeah um and you have to also submit like a deposit um, but usually the payment is done in like either weekly or monthly it depends on the contract that you sign um, whereas in university accommodation you can do payments um, either monthly or for every term so so for example the payment i've done is term wise so i pay once for the entire term and i don't have to worry about accommodation rent for like about three months and then again I pay another installment and then I don't have to worry about rent for another three months so um, we basically have three payments in university accommodation for each term but this is not the case in private accommodation where you usually you either pay monthly or you pay weekly depending on again your contract um, what I'd also like you to know is that um, if you have dependents then it's difficult for you to get university accommodation but private accommodations can still, um, you know, create some um, means for you to stay with your dependents. It's slightly more difficult to find a room with dependents um, if, if you're looking for accommodation in Chester. But this is not the case in Liverpool and um, other surrounding areas. It's just that Chester is slightly more um, filled with students, the accommodations. So 
it's slightly more difficult to get it if you have dependents here. But that's that's that being said, private accommodations are available. They will be available if you have dependents, and it's just a matter of doing your research. So there are many different websites that you can go to, like Zoopla or um, even Facebook Marketplace. But you do need to be careful of of scams, and just make sure that if you're if you're an international student living, you know, abroad, then try to get university accommodation at least for like the first six months. After that, you can shift to private accommodation or um, whichever way you want to live afterwards. But I would definitely recommend that you take the advantage of guaranteed accommodation for international students that University of Chester does and just apply as soon as you can to accommodation um, from the university. Uh, secondly, what, what I want you to know is that um, when it comes to travel, um traveling although it might seem like it's a short distance or it's 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 about time it does get kind of expensive so if you are going to take accommodation in a place slightly far away from the university you need to keep travel charges accommodation expenses as well as travel expenses in mind so if you're for example you're living in liverpool or the outskirts of liverpool or manchester then you have to consider the first of all, the time that it takes. So you might have to change like vehicle, change like uh, buses or trains, and you'll also have to pay for those. So, um, you know, two time, just traveling to Manchester once, if you've got like a rail card, is about five to eight pounds um, on a good day. And so doing that twice, it's like 16 pounds per commute, which is kind of expensive. So you need to keep that in mind while you're making your accommodation decisions. Um, when it comes to university accommodation, the university accommodation is relatively cheaper than private accommodation, and it's more of a secure way to stay because in case you're not able to make a payment upfront, um, the university has ways of like allowing you at least a 10 or 10 to 12 day leeway for payments and that makes it easier for someone who's on a slightly tight budget and they're trying to make ends meet. Then the university is not that um, th that rigid in terms of the timings of your payment. They do expect you to pay on time, but they are still considerate enough to give you a few days to a week's time for making payments. So that's another advantage of university accommodation. Some accommodations, they also have um, like specific provisions for cleaning, um, but some don't. So you can also look that up in in the accommodation brochures um, at the University of Chester's website. Um, also, when it comes to like your accommodation duration of the stay, you need to note that you will be um, paying a security deposit of about 250 pounds um, to 300 pounds. It depends on what time you come, but around two to 300 pounds, you're gonna have to pay as a security deposit, which the university will keep if there is any damage to the property, or if, um, for example, you leave the accommodation and uh, before your contract expires. So that 250 pounds is used as like um, something so that the university does not lose out on, um, or to, to prevent like there to be like a, and the 250 pounds is usually kept so that when the next until the next uh, occupant comes to take that room it acts as like a buffer for that time being so you need to keep in mind that you're gonna have to pay a security deposit of 250 to 300 pounds um, when you're booking that accommodation and that's usually done online so it's a pretty straightforward process um, but yeah just keep in mind that you have to pay a security deposit and that the the rent agreement is usually a contract that lasts for at least six months. Uh, you can get shorter ones, but that's relatively rare. Facilities at home. Okay, so in an accommodation, the facilities you get are basically in, okay, I'm talking about university accommodation here because there's a lot of variation in private, uni, uh, private accommodation, but in university accommodations, you usually get a single bed, uh, you get a closet, so a cupboard space, a desk, some, a chair, a reading lamp, and um, some additional storage space near near the ta near the table, 
And the table also comes with drawers where you can put like your books, your electronics and stuff like that. Uh, university accommodation usually doesn't charge for electricity and council tax, which is a huge advantage for people because um, private accommodation can charge for um, for heating and electricity, uh, which is not the case in university accommodation. Um, as for council tax, since if you're in a student visa, you don't have to pay council tax. So you don't have to pay your landlord for um, council tax, which is basically the money you pay to the council for them to take take your garbage out, to keep the roads clean for you, um, and these kind of things. So that's 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 council tax, which is paid every month to the to the basically the council of whichever location you're living in. Um, so as a student, you don't have to pay that, but if you're living by yourself later on, after after you get your degree, then you have to pay council tax as well, which is also very costly if you if you start adding that to your bills later on. Um, but you don't have to worry for about that as long as you're a student. Um, so other facilities that you get are basically, so like I mentioned before, some places they, they have cleaning in university accommodation. So they come and they clean out the bathrooms, the, the hallways. Um, and so you just have to clean your room. Um, and if you're in suite, then you have to clean your own bathroom, but otherwise it's clean for, but some places, some accommodations usually have a rota system. So you and your friends, your housemates, you guys decide on a time uh, or, or like a role. And so someone does the kitchen, someone does the hallways, someone does the bathrooms, you can do it like that. So it's usually up to you. Um, for private accommodation, some places they're really generous and they have like TVs given, you know, they're like sofas and in, in the common areas and you, you get your room with your bed. You can even get a double bed sometimes and you can get like your heaters and um, closets and stuff. Um, but again, that really depends on the house that you're renting out in private accommodation. So it's, and rent is also taken accordingly. So sometimes some private accommodations, they're really fancy. They've got like nice carpets and stuff. Um, you get lots of storage space, bigger rooms, double beds. Um, and if you have these kind of accommodations, they usually charge a bit more. Um, but one thing you also need to notice, uh, and this came as a shock for a lot of us international students is the walls are really thin in the UK. And so, um, it's very easy to make like disturb the other person in the next room. So you need to be careful listening to loud music in your room or, you know, um, moving around too much because the walls are thin. So anything that you do can be heard in the next room. So you need to be careful of that. Um, and in university accommodation, especially there is like a proper guideline uh, of like how you're not supposed to make noise or listen to loud music after 10 p.m. Um, and that we are liable to complaints if, if we do so. So you need to be a bit more careful uh, and keep those things in mind. But overall, it's, it's a good experience if you do the research and if you time yourself accordingly. Um, it won't be that difficult to get accommodation. Like I said, there are people living in private accommodations. A lot of my friends have stayed in private accommodations. They're really happy about it. So even if you don't get university accommodation, it's nothing to be you know, disappointed about. You can keep applying um, because as long as you're a student, you can keep applying for university accommodation. If you get in, it's good to go. If you don't, you can still stay in private accommodation and some of them are really nice. So um, you need to be careful though, if you're going through like a, a agent or an agency, for example, or search certain student rentals, uh, certain agencies, agencies can provide you with rooms quicker than by searching them for yourselves, but they might take a certain charge additionally for finding the room. So you do need to do your own homework and do your own research on that one. But yeah, there are agencies available in Chester that can help you find rooms. And you can also talk to people within like who are already students. So you can check out Facebook groups or you can even talk to some of the people in the Chester like societies, student unions and get to know if there are any rooms available. So um, we for the people of Nepal, we also have a Nepalese society um, where if you're a student in Chester, you can reach us, um, you can talk to us, and we can also help get you settled in um, by giving you advice and giving you like more idea about 
how this how Chester functions, how you can make the most of your experience here. Um, but that being said, there's like, you know, it's it's all the societies and the information you get from them. They're all from a volunteer, voluntary basis. So it's best to get information from the source, which is the university website or the private accommodation sites that you talk to. So yeah, do be do make sure that whenever you're setting up a contract, though, to keep in mind that the contract is usually for six months and there's a deposit involved. So do budget yourself accordingly. Thank you.